Hello everyone, I am Nivedita Jena from Ambika Prasad Research Foundation. Welcome to all of you to our channel Biodiversity and Conservation. So today we will have discussed about the antibacterial activities. So let's start. Let's know what is antibacterial first. So uh, the term antibacterial was first used in 1942 by Selman Waxman. And it is often used synonymously with the term antibiotic also. An antibacterial is an agent that inhibits bacterial growth or kills bacteria. Or we can say that uh, anything that destroys bacteria or suppresses their growth or their ability to reproduce is also defined as the antibacterial agent. Then coming to its classification. So, antibacterials, which are a subclass of antibiotics, have been classified earlier in several ways. However, to make it more easily understandable, we can cl classify antibacterial agents into three groups here. So, first one is the spectrum of activity. And the second one is depends on the effect on bacteria. And the third one is the mode of action. This is the way of classification of antibiotics or antibacterial agents which is based on their target specification. Uh, in this category, uh, the antibacterials may be either narrow or broad spectrum. The terms narrow spectrum and broad spectrum have been interpreted not specifically since their use in antibiotic history, but recently this acquired clear meanings in academic and industrial fields. The narrow spectrum antibacterials are considered to be those which can work on a narrow range of microorganisms, that is, uh, they act against gram positive only or gram negative only bacteria. Unlike narrow spectrum antibacterial, the broad spectrum antibacterial affects a wide range of pathogenic bacteria, including both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Usually, the uh, narrow spectrum antibacterials are considered ideal antibacterials and are preferred over the broad spectrum antibacterials. The reason is that the narrow spectrum antibiotics do not kill as many of the normal microorganisms in the body as the broad spectrum antibiotics and thus has less ability to cause super infection. So, here are the, some examples of broad spectrum or uh, narrow spec and, and narrow spectrum uh, antibacterials like uh, tetracyclines, phenicol, fluoroquinolones, third generation and fourth generation cephalosporins are the uh, broad spectrum antibacterials, whereas uh, the glycopeptides um, is specific for gram positive bacteria and uh, polymyxins is for gram negative bacteria. Depending on the effect on bacteria, there are two types of antibiotics like uh, bactericidal drugs uh, and bacteriostatic drugs. Um, uh, antibacterials which destroy bacteria by targeting the cell wall or cell membrane of the bacteria are termed bactericidal and those that slow or inhibit the growth of bacteria are referred to as bacteriostatic. Actually, the inhibition phenomenon of bacteriostatic agents involves inhibition of protein synthesis or some bacterial metabolic pathways. As bacteriostatic agents just prevent the growth of the pathogenic bacteria, sometimes it is difficult to mark a clear boundary between bacteriostatic and bacteriostatic, especially when high concentration of some bacteriostatic agents are used, then they may work as bacteriostatic. Uh, so, some prominent examples of bacteriostatic and bactericidal antibacterials are here. Uh, aminoglycosides, cephalosporins, penicillins, and quinolones are um, the uh, bactericidal drugs, whereas the you know, bacteriostatic drugs include tetracycline, sulfonamides, and macrolides, etc. Uh, the mechanism of action means uh, how a drug works or what is its mode of action. Uh, this is one of the most important factors related to each antibacterial. The major processes or functions which are responsible for bacterial growth are uh, cell wall synthesis, cell membrane function, protein synthesis, nucleic acid and folic acid synthesis, 
um, and so on. Uh, all such processes are targets for antibiotics. Therefore, antibacterials which interfere or disturb these processes in different ways can be subdivided into four groups, mm. such as uh, cell wall synthesis inhibitors, inhibitors of membrane function, inhibitors of protein synthesis, and inhibitors of nucleic acid and folic acid synthesis. So, um, uh, penicillin, cephalosporins, uh, imipenem, and uh, acetone are the cell wall synthesis inhibitors uh, where uh, aminoglycosides, chloramphenicol, macrolides, tetracycline are coming under the so protein synthesis inhibitors. Um, whereas the fluoroquinolones and uh, rifampin uh, are the nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors. And uh, sulfonamides, trimethoprim, and uh, pyrimethamide uh, are the folic acid synthesis inhibitors. Then coming to the side effect of antibacterial agents, uh, the major side effects of aminoglycosides are kidney injury, hearing impairment, and vestibular toxicity, DGNAs, uh, nystagmus, where uh, the side effects of sulfonamides include uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, abdominal pain, rash, photosensitivity, headache, and DGNAs. And the side effect of tetracyclines um, are uh, vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, abdominal pain, uh, tooth discoloration in children below than 8 years, uh, liver toxicity, etc. And the uh, quinolones um, side effect includes uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, headache, lethargy, insomnia, hot sensitivity can be severe, um, etc. I hope this discussion will help you to all of you. Thank you from Ambika Prasad Research Foundation.